Hi everyone, today we're looking at St Mary's Old Church in Wilton, England. Wilton used to be the ancient capital of Wessex, one of the seven kingdoms of England during the early medieval period. You can see here that some of the original gravestones have been incorporated into the footpath. Are these the original locations of the gravestones or have they been relocated to form the path? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Here you can see remains of the arcade. An arcade in architecture is a succession of arches. Near the bottom of the arch you can see the remains of a holy water font, also known as a stoop. These are generally placed at the entrance of a church to enable you to make the sign of the cross with holy water when entering. Wilton is three miles west from the cathedral city of Salisbury. Wilton was a thriving market town in the Middle Ages with as many as 12 churches and an abbey. Wilton Abbey was one of the most powerful abbeys in medieval England, but in the 12th century Salisbury built arguably the most impressive cathedral in England and the market traders moved to the bigger, busier, growing city. Combined with losing a third of its population to the Black Death in the 14th century and the closure of the abbey in 1539, Wilton declined in popularity and trade and by the 16th century the only church remaining was this church of St Mary's. The font we see here is not the original font. This font is from a deconsecrated church in Farrington, Dorset, and is said to be from the Norman period, from the 10th to 12th century. It was relocated here in 1980. It is believed that the church we are looking at now was built in the 15th century, including the arcade we saw outside. However, there are records showing that a church has been on this site since the 9th century. The chancel, that's the space around the altar, is dated from the 12th century. This is the memorial of Walter Dyer. He was an apothecary who moved to London. He died just aged 35. He left £600 in his will to found Wilton School for boys, where education was free. You can't have failed to notice the skull or death head as it's known on the memorial. Rather than being morbid, this design was actually very popular on headstones in the 16th and 17th century. They represent mortality and act as a stark reminder that no matter our status, we all leave this earth the same way. Keep an eye out for my upcoming video, which will be about what different headstone imagery represents. This eye-catching memorial is to Thomas Mell, who died in 1625. He was the mayor of Wilton, a servant to the Earl of Pembroke and the ward of both King James and King Charles. Moving on, we can see a beautifully carved memorial with pine cones, acorns and oak leaves. I will explain in my upcoming video what symbols on gravestones mean, but we can tell from these carvings that Henry Ford was a well-remembered man of the community who came from humble beginnings and had strength of character. One thing I found out about Henry Ford is that in 1820, due to the result of a local election, Henry went to the marketplace in Wilton and gave free beer to the poor as consolation. I'm pretty sure if Henry were around today, he would have gone bankrupt after Brexit, given out all those consolation beers. This stained glass window was made in 1952 by a glazier from York. On the right we have St Monica, the patron saint of difficult marriages. On the left we have St Edith. She's the patron saint of Wilton and died aged only 23. In 1845 a new church was built, just a three minute walk away. As a result the bells and many memorials were relocated to the new church and this church of St Mary's was partially demolished. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed my little tour of St Mary's Church. If you did, then please like, subscribe and share my video and I'll be back with a new video soon. See you next time.